Hi there, my name is Phil Yules. I work at the Babum Institute in Cambridge in the UK. Uh, this is a video tutorial about Labrador. There's a previous video tutorial about how to use Labrador as an end user. So uh, how research scientists use Labrador for creating data sets and projects and requesting different data. I recommend watching that before this one just to get a feel for it. This tutorial I'm going to talk about administrator only privileges. So how to use Labrador as a bioinformatician and how to process data and manage different projects. As a bioinformatician, often once Labrador is set up and people are using it, the first thing you know about new projects being added to the Labrador is that you'll get emails. Um, emails will be sent out that look like this one, so this is the email that you get when a new project is created, and when data sets are added to projects you get ones which look like this. They're separate so that if people add request new data sets for an existing project you still get emailed about it. Um, these emails come with links, so if I follow that link, then this takes me straight to Labrador and takes me straight to the project which is in question. Um, so it's pretty easy to follow up. Uh, you can also find projects such as this by um, either browsing for them. So if I, you can select different statuses from the home page by ticking these boxes. I can untick process and complete. I can see all the projects which are currently being worked on. This one's in red, so it's not been started, and this is the one that I just got the email about. Um, also, when you're logged in as an administrator, you have extra links in the drop-down box up here, and one of those is not assigned, which gives us a list of all the projects which have no bioinformaticians currently assigned to them. So great, we've got our new project which someone's requested for us. Uh, we can click through and see what data sets they've been added. And at this point, if there's anything that looks a bit odd or a bit confusing and you're not quite sure about, you can go and find who this contact is. Uh, clicking this will load up a blank email. You can go and ask them about what they what it is that they exactly want. Usually it's pretty straightforward. So this project looks good and I'm happy to take it on and start processing it myself. Um, I'm going to click edit project. As a bioinformatician I'm set up as an administrator and I have these buttons on everywhere so slightly more privileges. Um, also as a bioinformatician or an administrator on Labrador I have an extra panel on the edit project page here and I can select who the project's assigned to, uh, the contacts for the project, and its status. In the config.php file, um, you can set up the administrators. This is covered in the installation tutorial, um, putting in different email addresses for administrators and their names. This is where the names show up, so these are the bioinformaticians in our group. I'm going to click my name there. It automatically fills in my email address, and it changes the status from not started to currently processing. Uh, the contacts look fine, but I can add and remove different contacts here. Um, so I'll check over, everything else looks fine, and I'm going to click Save Project. Great. So you'll see that the project has gone from not started to currently processing, so that's great. And the person who requested the project will have just got an email saying that it's been updated and the status has changed, so that they know that it's being acted on. Every time the project is ed edited and the status is changed, they will get such an email so that they can track what's going on. So I've looked, I've accepted the project, I've checked for data sets, everything looks good, so I'm ready to start processing a data and actually doing something with it. So I'm going to go onto the processing tab. Uh, this is a button which only administrators have uh, called create processing scripts. This takes me to a new page and we can see all the data sets here. Um, listed. Now often projects will have uh, data sets of different types, different data types and it only makes sense to do them in batches so all the RNA-seq together or the chip-seq together. So you can select and deselect which ones you want to process at this stage. Um, I want to process everything because it's all chip-seq so it's all going to be done together so I leave it all selected. I'm going to scroll down and we come to the next panel. Uh, this is where we decide what it is that we want to do with the data. So at its most simple, we can just choose a, a processing step here. These are all um, set up in the config.php. There's a very simple one which is just download SRA. Um, if I do this on the simple server then you can see it creates commands here which just use wget with the FTP address of the data file, the SRA file, and specifying more friendly names for those SRA files. So instead of just having the accession number, it appends the accession number and the actual name of the data set. We find this is very, very helpful later on when you import this data into whatever program you're using and you can see what the what the data sets were without having to go back and it, you're less prone to making accidental errors. Um, 
in-house we've actually developed a, a processing pipelines piece of software called Clusterflow which is due to be released soon um, so I've configured Labrador here to use uh, something called Clusterflow download and that creates again a very simple file which just has the download links and the desired output file names um, you can use this yourself if you'd like to if it works with your setup or indeed if you have any other setup that you use for processing data any other pipeline software you can easily create these steps to f create files which will fit into that um, one of the things we found we spent a lot of time on was finding these URLs and Labrador automates all of this for you so it's easy to get this out of Labrador so you can customize this process to do exactly what it is that you want to do if you don't have anything set up and you just like to use Labrador it can do pipelining itself and in fact these shortcuts here are different pipelines that have been set up in the config file uh, this is chipseek data um, so it's probably it's, it's a single end I think so I'm going to do SRA to single end clicking this sets up a bunch of different um, steps so we've got the download, we've got dumping to FastQ, FastQC, some QC steps, trimming and aligning um, because this involves aligning I need to select a genome and this will write me a big bash script now each chunk of this bash script is processing one of these data sets up here, one of these accessions and you can see those different steps up there being processed one after another uh, if there's anything specific you want to do, you want to change how many processing cores are being used for the alignment, you can type that in here and edit them in the box. It will change to manual text ed entry down in this box, but everything down here should be updated. And sure enough, all of these steps now have that new thing. Because these need to be uh, processed, these are templates for each, each of the different data sets. There are special variables which you can use, which use these double squiggly brackets. Um, and these variables are shown here you can you drop any of these in and they'll be processed on the fly to create this bash script great so this all looks fine I'm happy with it the steps are look right um, you can preview the bash script and this all looks sensible and um, hasn't given me any warning errors if I hadn't selected a genome at this point for instance it would give me a, an error message and say that uh, there's no genome selected but it all looks fine so I'm going to scroll right down to the bottom and I'm going to click save you can see here where this bash script will be saved so that's, this is the directory for this project which is in our data directory and you can change the, the file name so if it's a download script you can call it downloads.txt or whatever you like uh, I'm going to call this processing.bash and then I can click save bash script when I've clicked this this directory didn't actually exist yet because no one had started any work on this Labrador recognizes that, creates the directory with the project ID and then writes this bash script in if I click OK now I can go to um, Putty, I'll bring up Putty in the terminal and I'm on the server where this processing is being done I'm in the data directory for, for Labrador, these are all the different projects that we've done and sure enough you can see tutorial project has been added there now I can go into tutorial project and there's my processing bash script I do less processing you can see this is what we just saw in the preview and it's all now written into this file so if I now want to run that bash script I can do see bash processing and that will fire off all these jobs and run through the bash script one at a time we have two different processing environments here at Babram we've got one which is a normal server which this is set up for where it's just running with single commands but you can also configure this to work with a cluster or something um, if I set the cluster you can see that all these commands have changed so that they're now fire it would fire off queued jobs instead loading in required modules and doing various other bits and pieces um, so you can configure Labrador to create these output files in whatever way works best for you very quickly I'll just show you what the config file looks like uh, if I just preview it on here um, I'm not going to do anything here but these are the different settings for the, that's for the download page and then these are the processing pipelines so those are the pipelines and then these are the processing steps so you can see the download one which I saw earlier is defined here in the pre-processing group and then the actual codes themselves are listed here so you can very easily change what is available in these down drop downs both in the steps here, so what comes into the template here, and also which shortcut pipeline shortcuts are dedicated here, and the different servers and the different genome addresses. Hopefully, all of this is clear when you look at the 
um, config file, there's extensive comments. If anything's unclear, please let us know and we'll try and flesh that out in the documentation. Okay, great. So let's say I've processed all that now, I've done all the uh, run all the jobs and they've all finished um, and one of the other things that Labrador is useful for is viewing reports in a quick and easy way. So say the cluster has emailed me telling that the jobs are finished from, from Clusterflow. I can go and I can click assign to me which is another administrator only option in this drop down. This shows me all the projects where I'm the assigned by informatician. So if I click on, on this one here which is currently processing and it's set to me at the moment, um, I can click on reports and view all the processing reports. You can set Labrador up to recognise any different file names that you use which of reports which are generated. So again this is completely customizable. Uh, we have a script which generates an HTML overview report of all different bow tie alignments and you can see here that most of these data sets have all aligned pretty well. So I can see that very quickly in the browser all along with the project. Um, you can also, that's under overview reports and then I can also see specific bow tie reports from each different data set that was analysed. This is um, the bow tie reports for a text file rather than an HTML file so instead of showing it in an iframe this will just bring in the actual text file and show it directly and also if you have single images then it will render the image in the page so pretty much any type of report should should show properly within Labrador. You can see FastQC reports which are HTML reports and these are again shown, shown in page. So this is a really quick and easy way to see all of the different QC, all the different reporting from your analysis together in one place and you can quickly skip through and see whether things have worked well or whether they need further work. In this case I am pretty happy with how it's worked, I think it's just about done and um, I'm good to go. So I'm going to go back to project details, I'm going to edit the project and I'm going to update the status to say processing is complete. Um, I'm going to hit save project and the person who requested this project, which in this case was me as well, will have an email saying that the project status has been updated and it is now complete. And then they can go and download the data or they can come and see. Again, that's covered in the other tutorial video. You can use Labrador to manage all the pro projects that you're working on in this way. Um, when I click assign to me, you can see this project has disappeared because by default it doesn't show any projects which are complete. So it's an easy way to keep track of what you're working on and in this way you can really organise your workflow and make sure that things don't fall through the gaps and making sure that there's nothing under not assigned. Great, uh, that's pretty much the extent of, of how to use Labrador as an administrator. Um, I hope there's more in-depth information in the documentation about um, how to configure Labrador to work with your setup with exactly your pipelines and, and your requirements and if you have any questions or any problems please do let, let us know. I hope that's useful and um, good luck with using Labrador. Thanks.